Hello, book dragons. It's Sarah from Miss Donnelly Reads. Thank you for joining me. And you will see I am outside. This is not a Zoom background. I started a new book and I figured I would share the first chapter with you because it's so good. Chirp by Kate Messner. You ready? First chapter is called Seagulls and Sabotage. Mia hadn't realized how much she missed the mountains. The countryside rolling past her car window was greener than anything in Boston. She loved those moose crossing signs and little villages that felt so sleepy and peaceful. June was an in-between season in New England, but in another week, the roads would be humming with campers and fancy cars full of New York City people who stopped to take selfies with cows. For now, Mia loved watching the quiet landscapes drift by. Packing the moving truck the day after school ended had been a hassle, but she was really glad to be moving back to Vermont. The truth was, Mia wished they'd never moved to Boston in the first place. She wished that she could have erased the last two years, but leaving was the next best thing and she'd have the whole summer to settle in. The 4th of July was less than a week away. Burlington's fireworks were <clears throat> Excuse me. Burlington's fireworks were the night before Independence Day and weren't as big as Boston's, but they'd be reflected in Lake Champlain, which made them twice as sparkly. Mia's family could go back to their old tradition, a picnic on the waterfront with sandwiches and dad's pyrotechnic brownies with chocolate frosting and red, white, and blue sprinkles. Best of all, Graham would be there. Summer fireworks hadn't been the same without her catching fireflies in a jar and explaining bioluminescence in the insect world. Are you awake back there, Mia? Mostly. Mia slouched and straightened her messy brown ponytail. She'd napped her way through half of Massachusetts and most of New Hampshire. Good, Dad said, because he hesitated for a few seconds, then blurted out, I'm in Vermont and you're not. He looked at her in the rearview mirror, cracking up as they zoomed past the Welcome to Vermont sign. Good one, Dad. When Mia was little, any time the, car, the family took a road trip, she begged her parents to stop the car right on the border so the front seat and the back seat would be in different states. Mom explained that you're not allowed to do that on the highway. So instead, the crossing the border shout out had become a Barnes family tradition. Never gets old. Mom rolled her eyes, but she laughed too. Then she passed a pile of day camp brochures to the back seat. Hey, you forgot these. I grabbed them in case you think more about summer plans. Mia hadn't forgotten. No thanks. She tossed the brochures back up front. Mom held up one of the one with a gymnast on the cover. There's a new gymnastics camp. Mia shook her head. I don't want to do gymnastics. That's fine. Dad glanced at her in the rearview mirror. You can make your own decision about summer activities. Great, at least somebody was on her side. Provided that those activities involve something other than watching reality TV, Mom said. Bummer. Add in some Mountain Dew and Chex Mix, and that had been exactly Mia's plan for the summer. When she got hurt and then had surgery a year ago, she couldn't do anything active for months, so she plunked herself down on the couch and watched all six seasons of Deal with the Sharks and American Warrior Challenge. When her arm finally healed, the doctor wrote a note saying she could go back to the gym, but by then both shows had another season out, so she just kept watching. You need to choose two activities, Mom said, dropping the brochures in Mia's lap. One active and one educational. Something for, I know, something for my body and something for my brain, Mia sighed. But I think I build muscle just watching those American warrior ladies. Have you seen them scale the warp wall? Mia loved how strong they looked, like nobody would ever dare mess with them. And deal with the sharks is totally educational. It looked like such a fun show to be on if you had the right invention. Once in third grade, Mia and her friend Alex had made a robot out of old toaster parts from the free pile after the neighborhood garage sale. It didn't do anything, so it wouldn't have to be good deal with the shark's material. But Mia loved thinking about other ideas. Maybe that's why she opened the brochure for launch camp for young entrepreneurs. I might try this one. I could learn stuff to help Grandma out with her cricket farm. Sounds great, but I doubt Gran needs much help now that she's retiring, Mom said. I'm not so sure about that, Dad said. Last time we talked, she didn't sound interested in selling the place anymore. You're kidding. Mom left Mia and her brochures alone and turned to Dad. 
She had that offer from the man who runs the food processing plant up the street. It was perfect, Dad shrugged. <sighs> she needs to think this through, Mom said. Running a cricket farm isn't light work and her health is failing. Mia opened the flyer and started reading about knitting camp. Anything was better than thinking about the idea that Graham wouldn't be around forever. She had a mild stroke in January, and even though she'd gotten out of the hospital quickly, the doctor said that she had to take it easy for a while, that the only time Mia had ever seen her grumpy. She looked frail, too, and that wasn't a word Mia would ever use to describe her grandmother before, but it had made her so sad. For the past few months, Graham had been texting Mia how she'd been doing in physical therapy. Now she didn't need a walker or a cane anymore, and she'd been doing core exercises to get her balance back. Last week, Graham had texted Mia a picture of herself planking in a new green warm-up suit. Made it to 45 seconds today. Graham was still supposed to cut down on stress, though, so she was getting ready to retire. That was the plan, anyway. It was part of why Mia's parents had decided to move back to Vermont to help with that transition. Here we are, Dad said when they pulled into the industrial park. Graham's new cricket farm was squashed between the Green Mountain Moose Warehouse and an enormous gym. Hey, that's one of the camps we were looking at. Mom reached back and shuffled the brochures until she found the one she wanted to wave at Mia. I told you, I don't want to do gymnastics. Mia pushed away the brochure, but it has warrior camp. Mom opened the flyer to a page with kids climbing a rock wall. You love that show. I like watching it. Mia took the brochure and dropped it back in her pile. Why couldn't there be a camp where you had snacks and watched other people climb stuff? Ready to check out Graham's new place? Dad pulled into a parking lot next to Green Mountain Cricket Farm sign, and they headed for the door. Graham had moved everything here right before her stroke. Before that, she'd been raising crickets in her basement. Graham's excited to give us the grand tour. Bet she's waiting in the lobby with cricket flower cookies for you, Mia. Dad was half right. Graham was in the lobby, but she wasn't waiting with cookies. She was standing on a chair, swinging a broom over her head and swearing up at the rafters. There were two seagulls perched on a beam by the window. She looked more like one of the Avengers than an old lady who had a stroke six months ago. Mom, what's going on? Dad rushed over, helped her down, and took the broom. Oh, these birds pooped all over the place, and who knows how many crickets they scarfed up before we shooed them out of here. And now they won't leave. Graham adjusted the green framed glasses, reading glasses on her head, which had gotten half lost in her wild gray curls. Then she seemed to remember that her family was visiting. Sorry. Hi. She gave them all hugs. Mia's was extra long, and then Graham reached for her broom back. Dad held it to held on to it. Let's just open the door. I bet the birds will find their way out. You need to relax. Relax, Graham yanked the broom out of his hand. When someone's trying to ruin your life work? Ah, oh, Mom, those birds aren't out to get you. This was just a little mishap. Mishap? No, Graham pointed her broom at the birds. This is sabotage. <laughs> I know, it's pretty good. Um, We'll see how this book can, continues on, but Lori Hell Sanderson, uh, Anna Ursu, all of the all of these people gave this book really good, really good reviews. All right, thank you for sitting with me. Bye.